never ever despise church in the presence of your children even if you have a different thought go to the person that you have ought against and get it sorted out from the person you have don't put into those little minds going to church is not too important we are not talking about a building we are talking about a family what do you really get by fault finding absolutely nothing we know by experience the little experience that we've had that complaining blaming fault findings murmurings never got us anywhere We welcome you to this program once again concerning family and uh, some practical points that we have been discussing on family and we want to discuss something very important today also let's talk about it and uh, what we really decided was faith in the family and how do you how do you have faith in the family and that's important and number 1 faith is important and we need to know the author and the finisher of faith the scriptures tell us in the book of hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1 jesus the author and the finisher of our faith faith is being built faith comes into our lives we trust each other we come to a place where we as husbands and wives we begin to trust each other it's very important that we trust each other and then when children come into the family we begin to trust even our children and the children begin to trust us and all this originates from our father god who is the author and the finisher of our faith yes and jesus christ the son of the living god who was manifested to destroy the power of the devil and bring faith into our lives now we know faith is something that we we all have to some extent mm. i mean i'm sitting on this chair i didn't check on this chair was it firm enough to handle me that's a natural faith anybody has but when it comes to faith in the scriptures faith through the scriptures into the family and how we could apply this faith who is jesus christ himself faith is not simply a, a thing but he's a person yes where we are connected together with him and we understand what it means to have faith in one another number one we need to get connected with the heavenly father how do we get connected with the heavenly father through jesus christ yes by faith through uh, uh by grace through faith we come into the saving knowledge through which we are connected to the heavenly father and thereafter we 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 build our faith and the bible talks about little faith or we have a short duration of faith and the bible talks about your faith grows exceedingly mm-hmm. and jesus talks about where is your faith what happened to your faith and no faith yeah there were times that people didn't have faith there were times that people did not have faith. faith and how do you bring this faith into your family because the bible says whatsoever is not of faith is sin. sin whatsoever is not of faith is sin sin is a loophole for the enemy to come into your family mm-hmm. if there is no faith in the family there is a possibility where the snake can enter in mm-hmm. the bible says about how the snake enters in in uh, Ecclesiastes and chapter 10 it talks about uh how a how a snake enters in and bites now uh, in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 8 Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse number 8 He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it and whoso breaketh an hedge a serpent shall bite him Whosoever uh, breaks the hedge, hedge that's the protection that we have and I would call it today as a subject as we're dealing on faith it's having faith in the family as an hedge 
of protection or else we find that we have broken the hedge and let the enemy walk in and do things in our lives so when we talk about the serpent we always talk about how the serpent could speak to us mm-hmm. thoughts thoughts once you allow the serpent to come into our house thoughts he can put a thought into my mind mm. against my wife and my, my wife can be having a different thought mm. against me or against the children and if you do not have faith to resist those thoughts mm. then you don't have faith in the family and there's going to be quarrels and i believe this is very important who ever breaks us uh, the the hedge he actually serpent. lets the serpent come in and cause havoc in the family and that's what has happened to the family probably some of you have been going to church learning the word fellowshipping with the believers and uh, all of a sudden for some reason the hedge is broken the serpent has come in we don't want to have we don't want to go to church no more Yes. We don't want to fellowship no more. We we bre- we don't realize that the hedge is broken. Mm. And we have dug a pit and we are the ones who are going to fall into the pit. Yes. And we have let somebody just come by us or probably a thought that mm. arose in one of the one of the minds of the people. Maybe uh, maybe me, maybe my wife or my children. The serpent has put a thought Well it's not very important to get into the local church a local church is not too important we could just stay at home might as well and do a little bit of our study and we are, we are strong enough see when you feel the strongest that's the time you got to know that you got to be firm that you got to be firm there's a possibility that you can fall let me take you to a scripture from the book of Romans Romans chapter 11 This is what happened to the children of Israel. We all it's all among it's all about the family that we are discussing. It was the family of Israel we find that they took it so light. Now in in Romans chapter 11 in Romans chapter 11 and verse number 20 we we'll read that well because of unbelief they were broken off and thou standest standest by faith be not high minded but fear yeah be not high minded well what was the problem with the family of israel why did they fall because of their unbelief number 1 they broke their relationship or there was faithlessness in them the bible talks about the children of israel in whom there was no faith in the book of deuteronomy it says in whom there was no faith and and god had to move away from people who don't have faith let me show you that scripture also i'm just encouraged today from the book of deuteronomy chapter number 32 and verse number 20 and he said i will hide my face from them i will see what their end shall be for they are a forward generation children in no, whom is no, is no faith there is no faith wherever there is a problem with faith it causes effects eventually people are affected Conscience. so come to the place where you need to have some faith the family of israel they had no faith in god and they broke faith one with another and eventually they fell so be not high minded it says mm. it's the high mindedness that comes into the family through some thought of the serpent while we have broke, broken the hedge well is it important for us to go to church maybe we'll not go to church this sunday maybe we'll go next sunday but when it comes next sunday well is it important after all we didn't go last sunday maybe we'll just leave a couple of weeks more and then go from the first the first week of uh, probably from the next month and and it doesn't come sometimes eventually we kind of think okay it's all right i read the bible at home i i, I go to a few youtube clips youtube clips but when you talk about the local church it's a family that's right where you fellowship one with another and the bible says 
that God commands a blessing there. Yes. It says in Psalm 133, you should read that this morning you read it. And Psalm 133, it says, how beautiful, how nice it is for brethren to dwell together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. In unity. You might say I find it difficult to get into unity in the church because I mean people are you know people can be different. But if you're mature enough, if you say that you're mature enough to even stay at home without church, then you ought to be in church with the family of God to fellowship one with another to build your family. As a family, we need to walk into the church and enjoy because we have faith in the Lord through which we build our faith one with another because he's the author he's the beginner and the finisher of our faith right or in other words it also means he's the developer of our faith and the bible says we need to fellowship one with another that the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us in in uh, John chapter 1 and verse number 7 it says fellowship one, one with John. another one, one John. John one John chapter 1 and verse number 7 so it is important for us to unite ourselves and verse 3 in the same chapter it says as the anointing flows through the priest mm-hmm. through the through the leadership in the church it flows down into the lives of the people mm-hmm. and god says i command a blessing there mm-hmm. you carry the blessing and come home because you have you have fellowship in unity and harmony that it there cannot be unity is not uniformity you cannot be the same as the other is yes. unity is even even in different talks even if somebody could be different to one another still for all you can it didn't say in uniformity it says in unity mm-hmm. a uniform means you're supposed to be the same as a pattern You're supposed to be understanding the way I understand. You're supposed to know what I you should, should be speaking the same thing that I speak. Well, if you think that somebody is weak, the Bible says encourage the weak. Mm-hmm. Let me encourage you with this scripture from the book of uh Thessalonians. It's good for us to read scriptures and to build ourselves in families. Now we're coming. And you might say, "Oh, this this doesn't look family. It looks well, if we don't fellowship with the greater family, And if we don't connect our family with the greater family that God has made we are all in the family of God he's our father mm-hmm. and and when there is a unity and when there is when there is uh, oneness and oneness mm-hmm. then it it flows it's contagious it flows into the family yeah, the anointing flows never ever despise church in the presence of your children Even if you have a different thought go to the person that you have you have ought against and get it sorted out from the person you have don't put into those little minds that church going to church is not too important when we don't go to a building we're talking i mean we we're not talking about a building we're talking about a a family fellowshipping with each other exactly and if you think that mm. you're strong enough fellowship with the feeble mm. encourage them First Thessalonians let's read that First Thessalonians chapter 5 First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 14 Now we exhort you brethren warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble minded support the weak be patient toward all men be patient towards all men support it says mm-hmm. support the feeble support the weak comfort the feeble minded that ought to be your heart when you're a child of god faith in the family ought to be understood where i'm going to exhort the brethren i'm going to warn them mm-hmm. right i'm going to warn them and i'm also going to, if there's any unruly thing don't be discussing outside of the person talk to the person if you could pray for that person if you can or commit this matter to the lord and say okay i'm just going to handle this situation and lord we just commit this matter because that will help you 
See what you sow into the greater family of the church is going to be a blessing into your own family. Mm-hmm. See, we are all talking about sowing and reaping. Words that we sow in the family, in the greater family that we live in is going to affect our individual families, right? Mm-hmm. Supporting the weak is important. And so faith is speaking the faithful word and encouraging one another when exactly. we gather together. Maybe exactly. somebody is discouraged, maybe you have a word of comfort, yeah. edification and you can encourage them as you meet them. Correct. It's important. Your your presence is important. You must say I don't need to be there. I mean well if you think you're strong enough to handle then you're sh- you're supposed to be there. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be there. Because somebody needs you there. While the preacher couldn't get hold of his heart, you are able to bring a word of encouragement to this person. Mm-hmm. Right? To bring we are builders together. God has called mm-hmm. us to build, not to break, not to destroy, but to build. Amen. So faith in the family yes. is important, right? And when you talk about faith, you're always talking about words. Yes. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Amen. When you hear the word of God, what do you do with the words that you hear? You're supposed to pronounce it. Mm-hmm. If you heard a word of encouragement, pronounce that word. Speak. Speak God. that out. confess that word mm. declare that word you don't speak anything contrary to what you hear faith comes by hearing so faith comes means you hear the word of god and you encourage you speak mm. the words bring faith home call upon faith listen to the voice of faith don't despise faith because faith jesus is the author and the finisher yes, of our faith mm. some people are they say well You mean to say all 52 weeks they're going to hear the message of faith? Yes. Whatever you hear, it has to build your faith. Otherwise you didn't hear the word of God. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Strengthen ourselves. We need to strengthen ourselves. The Bible says encourage one another. Encourage one another. Yes. So when it comes to the family, faith in the family, we're talking about words. faith is not something that is moving in the air faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen is there conflict in the family is there trouble in the family is there division in the family disagreement is there disagreement in the family are children finding it difficult to talk to you face to face What do you do about this? Faith is the answer. Speak words over your surrounding. Speak words of faith. Talk to the children. Talk to your spouse. Encourage one another with words. Faith is important. Don't let that serpent dist- uh, if you don't destroy or, or don't pull down the hedge and let the serpent come in. and put thoughts into your children into your wife so how we destroy or how we break the hedges by words mm. see we speak unbelief we speak fearful words mm. we speak words that are not in line with the scriptures mm. and we pull the hedge, hedge down and the serpent comes in and we 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 start having different thoughts coming into us mm. hurtful thoughts hurtful thoughts i mean mm. nothing really has happened Yeah. It could be a very simple situation which does not even need a discussion mm-hmm. which can which can be handled by individuals and you know we always think everything has to be brought to the table and you know we just want to you know but sometimes we, we some of the things we don't have to bring it to the table we need to just take care of our thoughts I misunderstood you and I thought that you felt bad about me I thought that you You, you have an evil thought against me see that's how the enemy works thoughts mm. and that's what you need to fight against see i'm not going to let deal them. with thoughts you need to deal with Pull thoughts down those thoughts yep. evil thoughts exactly where's our battlefield our no mind. mind the thoughts that the enemy brings into the family mm. right you got to pull those thoughts down when you find that somebody is not in dis- in agreement with you 
you can you can say what you you can give your opinion but don't 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 just give you throw your opinion and then walk out of the situation and say i don't care about what what she thinks but i know what i said was right that's it you can softly answer and go back and say father i pray in the name of jesus mm-hmm. that there be peace and harmony in the family we're not going to disunite ourselves we don't want to let the enemy come into our family we're going to speak words and overcome when you talk about faith you're always talking about words mm-hmm. In Psalm 127 and verse number 5 it says speak to your enemies in the gates. Mm. I don't let the enemy come in and sit on a couch and then let him mm. uh, uh determine what he what you need to go through or, or what you're supposed to do. Speak to the enemies in the gates. Come on that word speak means command. Mm. Hear ye the word of the Lord you devil you have no right mm-hmm. over my children you have no right over my spouse mm-hmm. I take authority over that spirit mm-hmm. I take authority over those thoughts and I speak to you take your junk and get out words that's faith in the family that's faith in the family and you feel well I feel so awful I don't know there's something wrong I feel bad take authority over it in the name of Jesus we have power in the name of Jesus we have power through the blood of Jesus Christ we have power in the word of god amen we have the word we have the name we have the blood and we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb we overcome the devil in his name yes. and we overcome the devil by the word of god we say it is written mm. my family is blessed yes God has commanded a family God has commanded a blessing over our family mm-hmm. where there is unity you may have different thoughts at times but be patient mm-hmm. very important faith and patience helps you inherit mm-hmm. the promises they go together they go together we are so impatient and we want to see results immediately so why don't we build our faith to see results immediately mm-hmm. and the only way you build your faith is being consistent with the word of god mm-hmm. and declaring the word of god and see miracles by faith mm-hmm. galatians 3 and verse 5 says miracles happen you might say i need a miracle in my family how does a miracle take place by the hearing of faith mm-hmm. and how do you hear faith by you speaking you got to speak words of faith we have a classic example in the book of second kings you might say oh my spouse doesn't have any faith uh my husband he he has i mean he's he's a workaholic and he he doesn't care about the family and i don't know how i can get things around how how could i bring up my child he puts all the responsibility on me mm-hmm. but look at this woman who looked at a man of god of faith built a little chamber asked the husband and got a little chamber built for this man of god and the man of god in return prayed for her and she had no mm-hmm. children she got a child mm-hmm. it was all her faith the husband was not in the picture The husband came into the picture after the child was born at a certain age this workaholic who took this boy to go and work mm-hmm. in the field mm-hmm. and the boy had a headache and the boy died mm-hmm. in the lap of the mother what did she do did she blame the husband no did she blame the prophet no did she blame any situation she used her faith she said everything is well when the husband said how is it that you want to go and meet the prophet it's not a it's not a special day today mm. while the son was dead mm. she took the boy into the ch- into the chamber that she had prepared for the man of god she everything had to do with the faith that she had carried all this while and she worked her way through for the miracle and when the husband said 
what's wrong you want to meet the man of god she said yeah i want to meet him everything is well mm-hmm. she, the word she used was shalom the husband said why do you want to meet the man of god it's not a very special day today mm-hmm. see all this has to do with faith in the family you must say you, you keep blaming your husband or you keep blaming your wife and say they don't have faith but do you have faith to bring this miracle into the home mm-hmm. this boy was dead and the man of god went um, and the and she came to the man of god mm-hmm. and said you better come home now i want you to pray a prayer of agreement with me mm-hmm. everything is well i want you to pray a prayer of agreement with me mm-hmm. and the man of god came the bible says call upon the call upon the elders so that the prayer of faith can save or heal the sick mm-hmm. right go with somebody who will agree with your faith and the boy was raised from the dead do you think the husband would have been the same no the husband would have never been the same faith came into that family you need faith in the family you don't need words and blabberings and complainings and yeah. fault findings yeah What do you really get by fault finding? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's not that we haven't. It's not that we haven't, but we knew, we know by experience, the little experience that we've had that complaining, blaming, uh fault findings, murmurings never got us anywhere. In fact, the Bible says you even you even uh, open a door for the serpent to enter mm-hmm. in when you complain and murmur. I imagine this man's faith the, the husband who was a workaholic would have said my your faith has brought brought the boy back to life mm. I'm going to follow the same faith that you're following man you know, that man of god I'm waiting for that man of god to come back I want to spend time with the man of god and build my faith up I can imagine a family where faith is contagious because mm. faith brings a miracle and through the miracle it just explodes Yeah. The family all the family would have been blessed. The boy would have really been blessed. Mm. The husband was blessed because of the woman's faith. Mm. That woman's faith. She just made a little offering in the beginning and she just called the man of God and said, "Let me just prepare something for mm. you." It started off with a cup of tea probably. She had faith. That faith was so contagious mm. that came into the family, raised the boy up from the dead. and won the husband back mm. to walk in faith mm. and thereafter we also see that she her faith did not stop she had to she had to leave her city and go back to another city uh, to another 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 village because there was famine and god spoke to her and she came back when she came back the 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 prophet servant was discussing something with the king and uh, about the miracles that took place with elisha and all of a sudden she walks up to the king and she uh, she cries out for mercy and say my land and the and the prophet servant said she's the woman she's the woman that i was talking about mm. but the king would have had faith are you sure and she, the king said restore all her land mm. give all that back to her and the kingdom would have received faith because while this man was talking about what il- the acts of elisha this woman walks in the testimony itself walks into the mm. king's court and there was joy in the kingdom faith in the family is important let's wind up by speaking something two scriptures that i want to share from the book of proverbs chapter number proverbs chapter number 15 and verse number 1 a soft answer turneth away wrath but grievous words stir up anger a soft answer turneth away wrath a wrathful situation things are boiled up everybody is mad about situation but your soft words of faith can restore a soft answer turneth away the wrath why are you wrath because of something that has happened in the family but your words of faith your soft words of faith can cause the whole thing to change that situation can change that situation can change altogether 
Then all of a sudden it turns away wrath. It turns away that sorrow. It turns away that deep anger. It turns away. Because your words of faith can bring healing into a child's life. Your words of faith can put that rebellious spirit out of the child's life. Your words of faith can restore your wife or your husband. Soft. You might say, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm so angry about the situation, but I'm going to speak a soft word. When, when David and all, all of them wanted to go against, because go against, uh, I mean, everybody wanted to stone David. Stone David. They want to put the whole blame on David, but David set himself apart in 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse number 5 and 6. He set himself apart and he started encouraging him. So how do you encourage yourself with words? Mm. See, when, when things are bad around you, separate yourself and communicate with the Lord. Be connected to the source mm. of the solution. Mm. See, everybody is a part of the problem. But you can move away from the problem and connect yourself mm. with the sol- solution, the one who brings the solution, and then speak the soft words. And the danger is, instead of doing that, we do this. In chapter 12 and verse numbers, Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 18. There is, there is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. There is that who speaks like the piercing of the sword. You know, you don't need to carry your sword and start piercing people. Your words can pierce the hearts mm-hmm. of the people. Your children, your family, your spouse, your husband or your wife. Those words that you hurl against each other. Mm-hmm. They can be like the piercing of the souls. They are hurt. They mm-hmm. are wounded. And they feel that they don't have a husband no more at home. They got a tyrant at home. Mm-hmm. Or we have a vicious woman at home. I mean... Everybody is on pins when she walks in. That's not how a family works. No. It doesn't work that way. There's a piercing of the sword. There's a piercing of the sword. But the next word says, what does it say? But the tongue of the wise is health. But the tongue of the wise is health. You want to have a good tongue? You want to have words of life? The words... Uh, but the words of the wise is health. You want to have words of faith, mm-hmm. love and favor and grace. You're going to have health in the family, restoration in the family. Mm-hmm. Speak words of life to one another. Don't speak at each other. Well, if you want to discuss something, let's bring it up, talk and find a solution. Don't just say, you ought to, you ought to be blamed. No. We, we discussed last time, mm-hmm. we are to be blamed. When we, take the, when we take the blame ourselves, okay, we made a mistake. We spent it out wrong. We made the mistake. Mm-hmm. We work it out together. See, so you made the mistake. And you say, I made the mistake. They're only causing trouble. We so, give room to the devil. We give room mm-hmm. to the devil because words are powerful. Words of life mm-hmm. throws away the works of certain Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the words of life throws away the works of Satan. And the words of death attracts demons. Mm. Words of death attract demons. Negative words attract demons. Demons, they get attracted. When when families are quarreling with words at each other, hurling words at each other, demons say, that's a party for us. That's a party. Mm -hmm. Let's go enjoy the party. And then they come and add to the party destruction so the words of the wise where does wisdom come from the word of God Mm -hmm. by hearing the word of God and doing the word of God just like the man who built his house on the sand he's a foolish man Mm -hmm. but the man who built his house on the rock is a man who heard the word and who was a doer of the word he was a wise man yeah he's a wise man he's a wise man so you want to build your house build on faith Mm -hmm. Remember, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. faith. Jesus, the developer of our faith. Mm. Jesus, 
He is in the body of fellowship. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I'm there in the midst, Jesus said. A two or three can come in agreement as touching anything of the Father, he will do it. So come to the grips of understanding, family is important. But how do we communicate to one another? Our communication should be, when we communicate with one another, it has to be acknowledging every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus. It is to confess and acknowledge every good thing. And also th- being thankful for what God has done in our lives, not just, you know, finding fault at each other and just saying, God did this to us. God has done this to us. Mm. God has blessed us with all these good things. I think thanking and being so grateful for the blessings that God has bestowed into the family, mm. I think that's very important. That's very important. When we are ungrateful and unthankful, we have a spirit of, you know, mm. uh, a murmuring and a grumbling spirit mm. and an attitude that will really actually displease the Lord. Yeah. He says, continually give thanks unto the Lord. Yes. This is the sacrifice of praise that we have. Yeah, because we have a good mm. God who blesses us with all good things. Yeah. It's a sacrifice. Mm. And what are the sacrifices? Just to be thanking the Lord all the time. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's an attitude that we have in our hearts that we thank the Lord. Mm. Hebrews chapter 13 mm. and verse 15. Continually, yeah, let giving us thanks. giving thanks unto the Lord, which is the sacrifice of praise. Fruit of our lips, giving thanks to His name. Which means, well, even when there's a situation that is risen, see, praise always brings the presence of the Lord. Yes. We can go on and on. The Bible says God dwells in the midst of the people who praise, praise him. him. Right? In Psalm 22 and verse 3. Mm. God dwells in the midst of the people who praise Him. Now, even in a, in a situation that you cannot praise Him or you can't thank Him, it says in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse number 15. Hebrews 13 and 15 says, By Him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to His name. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a sacrifice in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. When things are not going smooth in your life, when things are bad in your life, there ought to be a time of sacrifice of praise. Yeah. It's a sacrifice of praise. Oh, I have nothing to... I'm really having a situation. I'm having a situation there. I'm having a situation here. Mm. Just like Habakkuk in Habakkuk 3 and verse 17. Mm. Yet will I praise the God of my salvation. Mm. He went through everything. Mm. I mean, hell broke loose against him. Mm. His family, his life. He had nothing to eat finally. But he says, yet will I Mm. praise the Lord. Yeah, praise can actually open a way for God to bless the family. And make a way so that, you know, the conflict will be resolved and problems can be sorted out. Yeah. Praise, praise brings down the presence, of the, the Lord. presence of the Lord. It's not that the presence of the Lord is not in us. Mm. But because we are moved in our emotions, we have, we have got into the feeling realm. Mm. God says, I want to come upon you all. Mm. See, He's in you and He can be upon us also because He's God. He dwells in the midst of the people who praise Him. He dwells in the midst of the people who praise Him. So when you start praises, wow, you begin to see the presence of the Lord just fills, fills that place up. And there's so much of calmness. That's faith. Yeah, that's faith. That faith. See, if you really have faith, you put all these ingredients together. All these ingredients come together where you say praise, patience, joy. Mm-hmm. All this has to do with faith. Because Jesus is all. Mm-hmm. All in all. Sacrifice of praise continually. Which is mm-hmm. thanksgiving. And the word thanksgiving is... Confessing. It's a, conf- uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a confession that we make. Oh, thank you, Father. You've always met us at the time of our need. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Even in the pray- place where we, it can be a sacrificial offering. Mm. But what is a sacrificial offering? Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, it oh. is hard, it is difficult, the surrounding is not okay. But still, I give thanks to you, Lord. I still praise you, Lord. In everything, Lord, you will be able to bring us out of this situation. That's right. That's a sacrifice of praise. Paul, in their midnight hour, mm, in Acts 16 and 31, it's a, uh, Acts 16 and verse number 25, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Mm. And then they started singing praises. praises. That was a sacrifice of praise. 
I mean, they were in chains in the inner dungeon. Who would want to praise God? That's the best opportunity you have to grumble and murmur and complain. We don't know. The scriptures didn't record. I don't know. He was as you and I are. Probably Paul would have been blaming Silas and Silas would have been blaming. But at midnight, they got a revelation, I suppose. I mean, this is what I think. We don't know. Maybe we'll, eternity will tell us exactly. Until midnight, they would have been... See the wounds I got. I mean, I have I've been beaten more than you. I mean, just count the number of stripes you have. Count the number of stripes. You should have. You... And they would have been blaming each other. And all of a sudden, at midnight, they got a revelation. Oh, we need to pray. Mm-hmm. Prayer Praise is always for solution. And we don't only pray. Mm-hmm. We are going to sing praises. Mm-hmm. And we are not only just going to whisper the praise. We are going to make a loud noise that all mm-hmm. the prisoners hear them. Mm-hmm. And all the prisoners heard and everyone's bands were loose. Mm-hmm. And a breakthrough. Everyone bands. Maybe your family is having bands around and probably... They're not talking to each other eye to eye. But when one starts praising the Lord, there's going to be a foundational shaking. Mm-hmm. The earthquake came just to shake the foundations of the world, uh, of, the, of, of, the, of the jail. And all those prison doors were open mm-hmm. and everyone's bands were loose. Mm-hmm. You want your family to be, you want your family um, bands to be loose. Mm-hmm. Your children's band, your husbands, your wives, maybe somebody who's in the family, you want their bands to be open, start praising the Lord. A sacrifice of praise. Mm. A sacrifice of praise. Asha, you can pray. Father, we pray right now in Jesus' name, Father. Lord, we pray for every family right now. Father, if there is any kind of a conflict, disagreement, disharmony, we pray in Jesus' name, Father, that your love will penetrate, Lord, through these yes. cameras, Lord, to their hearts, touching Thank their lives Lord. right now in Jesus' name. We bind the foul enemy, Lord, yes. that brings all kind of division, Lord, to separate families, Lord, to bring disharmony, Lord, disagreements, Father, in Jesus' Thank name. You. Father, we pray, Lord, let there be yes. peace in the family, Lord, love and unity and harmony yes. and oneness, Lord, in the families, Father, right now, that they will speak, Lord, over each other, Lord, loving words, Lord, caring words, Lord. Thank you, Father, kind words, God. And Lord, not speaking at each other, Lord, but speaking gracious words, Father. Thank you, Father, you're a good God, Lord. And Lord, complimenting each other, Lord, speaking good about each other, Lord. Thank you, Lord, not finding fault, Lord. But Lord, Father, those words that you have given us, Lord, Lord saying, Lord, I love you. Speaking to each other, saying, God loves you and I love you too. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, Father, for restoring unity in the families, Lord. Between the husbands and the wives and, Lord, between the parents and the children, Lord, and between the children, Lord, they're having conflict against the parents, Father. We thank you, Lord. You're a good God. Oh, you're a good God, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father. Thank you, Father, for resolving Every problem, Father. In Jesus' name, Father. We pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Be in peace in your home. Mm-hmm.